It's time for a Queensland election update. Uh, it's one week after uh, election day, which we uh, did our election night uh, live stream. Uh, we predicted that probably the uh, Labor Party would, uh, led by Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk, would just get over the line. And it now looks like that is all but certain. Uh, Labor will get uh, 47 or 48 seats out of the the 93 there. So there's in the aftermath, there's been uh, a, a lot of uh, reflection on whether the Liberal National Party performance uh, is related to the federal uh, performance of the federal government and also the, um, the role of uh, One Nation uh, assisting the, the Labor Party and also its uh, relative uh, strength. Now, I believe that this was uh, an election fought on, you know, state issues. Basically, when I say state issues, I, I mean that Tim Nichols <laughs> wasn't a very good uh, leader and didn't run a good campaign, didn't make the, the the case for change. But certainly, nobody can deny that One Nation, with their uh, preference policy of uh, preferencing every sitting member uh, last, uh, really, you know, assisted the Labor Party uh, to uh, get over the line. And there's been a lot of anger. Uh, amongst uh, so, uh, some conservatives that One Nation has done this and basically uh, re-elected a progressive uh, government which is in a lot of ways uh, against the values of One Nation. Yes, well I think the reason being that what the results were uh, was Tim Nichols, uh, we said this on the election coverage, uh, he couldn't give a straight answer to any number of questions. Now, I would prefer uh, to face Brett Lee blindfolded for an hour and uh, get barraged by balls and have broken ribs uh, than listen to Tim Nichols for an hour. Uh, he is that painful and awful to listen to. Uh, and he really just, for me, personifies uh, <clears throat> the, the breakdown of, of politics uh, from the people. Uh, Paul, he doesn't really care about Queenslanders too much and he was trying to be far too labour light. And that's why many uh, of the right uh, voted for Catters Australia Party, voted for One Nation and uh, therefore uh, that drained a lot of votes out of the Liberal National Party, a lot of votes that they couldn't afford to be drained out of the party. Um, I think that if they had a more a charismatic, uh, a more, um, how do you say, conviction-style uh, politician uh, who, was, uh, who was a true uh, conservative, who was uh, a true centre-right politician, uh, they would have got across the line early because we, we definitely saw some seats, 20% One Nation, 20% LNP, 20% Qatar, and then... Uh, they, they go 30% uh, Labor. Now, you can tell by those figures there that clearly there were some Conservative electorates that voted, uh, that, that voted in a Labor member because of the breakdown of the right and the sheer fact that uh, Tim Nichols uh, is, uh, you know, probably a good man but not a great politician and uh, many... Uh, of those right-wing votes went to minor parties because the Liberal Party are no longer a right-wing or a conservative party as such. Well, Tim Nichols was in denial uh, all week, refusing to uh, concede defeat, uh, probably because he wants to hang on to the job of opposition leader for as long as possible. Now, uh, we mentioned previously the tensions between the Liberals and uh, Nationals at a federal level. Uh, well, that is reflected by the fact that uh, they have different approaches to dealing with uh, One Nation. Uh, George Brandis called uh, dealing with uh, One Nation uh, poison. Uh, meanwhile, uh, nationals uh, such as well George Christensen, he offered an apology for the uh, on behalf of the LNP to One Nation voters for uh, letting you down. And Matt Canavan uh, said that it's important for the nationals to maintain a separate identity uh, at a federal level. So there, there are certainly. Uh, you know, mi uh, mixed feelings within the uh, the coalition about how to deal with the the One Nation factor. 
Well, I think that uh, One Nation, um, it's all a storm in a teacup. I'm really sick of talking about it. Uh, they're not go ever going to be a successful party uh, purely for the fact that they have a very, very centralised leadership structure um, and, you know, the, the whole preferences, as you managed before, m mentioned before, uh, One Nation are never going to be anything more than a conversation or three or four seats in the Australian Senate at a double dissolution or, you know, two or three seats at most in the Queensland Parliament. So I think it's all a bit of a storm in a teacup, to be honest with you, Tim. I doubt that there would be this uh, problem uh, for the coalition when dealing with Australian Conservatives because they would naturally do um, or preference the Liberals and Nationals despite, you know, obviously their differences with them and uh, vice versa, where uh, One Nation, people view them as a right-wing party, but they've they've got supporters, you know, from both the right and Labor working class voters, which is, I think, one of the reasons they made this preference decision in the Queensland state election is because they were spooked by the backlash to their uh, Western Australian state election preference deal with the, the Liberals, which was uh, deemed to have uh, backfired on them. So uh, definitely with this, you know, One Nation being, you know, pushed in all, all these different directions, um, does it open the possibility that, you know, maybe now the, you know, Australian Conservatives and Cory Bernardi can you know, say, well, you know, we're the, um, you know, the real alternative for, for voters? Well, it's a good point you make because I think that in the majority of cases, uh, Australian Conservatives are disaffected uh, Liberals of the Conservative faction. But I think that One Nation voters are disaffected uh, Labor voters of the right faction. So uh, One Nation preferences, I think, will always go to the Labor Party. Uh, and I think that... Uh, that's the key difference between the Australian Conservatives and the Liberals because the Australian Conservative voter may preference Australian Conservatives first, may preference Liberals second, may preference uh, the National Party third. So I think it's a different game to the One Nation voter who, say, may hypothetically preference uh, the One Nation, uh, you know, say, first and then... Uh, the Labor Party second. So it's a whole different kettle of fish. And I'm not very comfortable uh, getting behind One Nation so much. I like their uh, energy policy. I like their immigration policy to a large degree. Obviously, some facets I disagree with. They're obviously a party with a few good policies, but I think they are really old Labor uh, right faction uh, kind of uh, Bush... Uh, politicians and uh, and I think where the principles lie uh, more so, not to say that they don't lie in one nation as well, but I think where the principles do lie is in Australian Conservatives and I think that the benefit of such a party uh, would be to draw the Liberal Party uh, to become more of a Conservative Party and I hope we see that in the next Queensland election, um, that it could actually work uh, to the LNP's advantage by making them more so a party of principles rather than a party of broken promises and populism. Because in reality, like the rise of the Greens, I mean, it hasn't affected Labor too much because all the Greens' preferences just work their way uh, back to uh, the Labor Party. Um, but with regard to Australian Conservatives, they obviously have their first uh, electoral test coming up in the, the Benelog by-election. That, that will be an important uh, side uh, factor there. So um, obviously, if, you know, One Nation is where all the, the protest vote is, is going currently, but, you know, will it be able to, you know, filter to Australian Conservatives who, you know, we both agree is a more well-rounded party? Well, it certainly is. Uh, it's a party of people who uh, care actually about uh, keeping this country uh, going, really. And I think One Nation is a protest. Australian Conservatives balance both innovation 
and tradition to a great level. You look at, say, the nuclear policy and uh, then you look at, say, uh, their, you know, veneration of Judeo-Christian value of espoused in policy. So I think that uh, the Australian Conservatives offer what John Howard used to offer Australians in the early 2000s. Uh, but we're not seeing that anymore. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there have been some really good One Nation politicians. We look at, say, Pauline Hanson and Malcolm Roberts. What they've actually done to uh, the, the realm of ideas has been incredible, especially on immigration and climate change. But I think they're too much a one or two issue party and they don't have a well-rounded platform, as you said, Tim. So I'm hoping that in Queensland and in Bannalong, uh, the Australian Conservatives can get some traction because certainly here in Victoria, they've already got a quarter of the size of the Liberal Party uh, in membership here in the state of Victoria. Uh, so certainly I think that this will change the dynamics of, of state politics and of federal politics in years to come. Uh, if they are to keep up this immaculate growth. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.